Aegea is the fifth closest exoplanet to Earth, a gas giant in orbit around the K-class star of Epsilon Eridani. It orbits at around 3.5 astronomical units from its parent star. Some of you may think, how fascinating, but isn't it just another coal, probably Saturn or Jupiter-like system, isn't it? Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our exoplanet series to take a closer look at the Epsilon Eridani star and its potential habitability. So let's get to it. Epsilon Eridani, also known as RAN, is a main sequence star not too dissimilar from our Sun, located approximately 10.5 light years away from Earth. A spectral class of K2, it has an apparent magnitude of 3.73, which makes it dim, but nevertheless, the third closest star system visible to the naked eye, after Alpha Centauri and Sirius. Cooler than the Sun, with a mass of 0.82 solar masses and a radius of 0.73 solar radii, it's very similar in fact to Alpha Centauri b, also known as Tolyman. But as a very stable solitary star, it really doesn't get much better potentially for life to evolve. Strangely though, it's one of the youngest stars observed from Earth, and Epsilon Eridani is estimated to be just 800 million years old, very young indeed compared to the Sun's 4.6 billion years. Due to its proximity to our solar system and its solitary yellow-orange dwarf status and indeed youthful age, Epsilon Eridani has been the subject of numerous studies to understand the early stages of stellar evolution and indeed planetary formation. As things stand, we know of one planet and it has the given name of Aegir. Anglicised as Aegir, the name means sea in Old Norse and is the nearest planet other than in our solar system with a formal name. We also know that it is a gas giant that orbits around 3.5 astronomical units. This probably doesn't whet the appetite too much, as it's much further out than Earth, and also in orbit around a weaker star than our Sun. So let's look at reasons why Aegir might actually be more interesting, so to speak, than at first glance. First of all, I've mentioned on a few occasions that in many ways our search for life is somewhat flawed. We're looking for Earth-like worlds in the habitable zones, but it may be just coincidence that Earth is actually a solitary world. We could also have found ourselves, say, as a moon in orbit around a super Neptune or a mini Jupiter world, and we'd still be perfectly happy and habitable too. In fact, given that the gas and ice giant worlds of our solar system have many, many rocky bodies in orbit around them, not least the Galilean moons Titan and company, perhaps we should really be looking for gas giant planets within the habitable zones of stars and make the assumption that they will probably have potentially many habitable moons. So that's all very well. We have a gas giant and yes, it could have many moons, but how many moons does it have? And are they still going to be frozen ice balls just like the ones around Jupiter, the Galilean moons or Titan? In this graphic, we see the potential habitable zone of the star Epsilon Eridani. It would stretch from about 0.5 to 1 astronomical units, so it becomes fairly obvious that Aegea at 3.5 astronomical units is going to be a very cold planet, indeed probably slightly colder even than Jupiter. But it does add an interesting conundrum. For example, in our video, The Temperature of Callisto, we speculated that temperatures on the equator under the Sun could theoretically reach around minus 100 degrees Celsius, which although obviously cold, is not so cold that given the right protections human could survive, although probably not thrive. Given that Callisto has no atmosphere like say Titan, and also that Aegea is only slightly cooler than the Jupiter system, it does raise an interesting question as to how warm a potential moon in orbit around Aegea could reasonably expect to be. The actual temperature of any moon would depend on a variety of factors, including the thickness of its atmosphere. For example, a Venus-like world would likely stay very warm, potentially even at this distance. Its composition, or even its axial tilt, could affect the distribution of solar energy across its surface. So yes, fair enough, based purely on its distance from the Sun alone, we can reasonably assume that any moon orbiting Aegea would be very cold compared to the Earth. But maybe it's time to tentatively say that perhaps our non-typical, non-nuanced habitable zone may mean we're not focusing on worlds like Aegea as much as perhaps we should, and that although less likely, they could still easily support life. Not only this, but as Epsilon Eridani ages over a period of a lifespan of around 20 billion years, the net luminosity of the star will increase, causing the habitable zone to slowly expand outwards to about 0.6 to 1.4 astronomical units. And truth be told, we still don't fully understand planetary migration, even within our own solar system. 
For example, some believe that Jupiter originally was much closer to the Sun, and even that Neptune originally formed within the asteroid belt, and has since migrated outwards. So it's possible at some point, Hygieia could migrate inwards, and indeed Epsilon Eridani is thought to have quite a substantial dust cloud inside the orbit of Hygieia, but given that it's a pure speculation at this point, we will assume Hygieia is going to stay put for now. K-class stars like Epsilon Eridani have much longer lifespans than even our Sun, so Hygieia probably has a long, long period of time for any microbial life to develop eventually. In today's graphic, we imagine what we might see from an ocean moon with a thick enough atmosphere so that water could possibly be in liquid form in orbit around Hygieia. Looking back towards Epsilon Eridani at 3.5 astronomical units that would shine at approximately minus 23 apparent magnitude, or equivalent to the Sun at around 6 astronomical units. Epsilon Eridani, as we mentioned, is thought to have a substantial dust cloud in orbit inside the orbit of Hygieia, and we can see it depicted here. Some of the other moons with less atmospheres appear as frigid, frozen worlds. Epsilon Eridani is a solitary K-class star that lies some 10.5 light-years from Earth. In a distant orbit, a sub-Jupiter-like planet orbits its star and potentially could harbour many moons, just like the gas giant planets of our own system. Many different variables, including atmosphere or axial tilts, could have great effects on the surface temperatures of any of these moons, and it's not out of the question that at least one of these potential moons could harbour liquid water, thought to be the key ingredient and building blocks for life to develop and flourish. Over the next few years and decades, our understanding of the Epsilon Eridani system will improve, and we may yet find more planets to contemplate. For now though, Hygieia remains the key focus for investigation within the system. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who've already done so, and if you like any videos or subjects brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and sometimes your idea could show up next week. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.